Thank you for viewing our short video cast on accessing treatment in delays to DEXA. My name is Jill Griffin and I lead on professional education and development for the Royal Osteoporosis Society. This video cast is intended for healthcare professionals working in the field of bone health and primary care, treating people with the condition and at re increased risk of fragility fracture. With me today are Associate Professor Kasim Javed, consultant in metabolic bone in Oxford, Sarah Conagher, FLS Specialist Nurse at Oxford University Hospital, and Jenny Nell, Specialist Advanced Practitioner Radiographer in Bone Densitometry at University Hospitals Plymouth. DEXA bone densitometry scans play a really important role in the diagnosis and management of osteoporosis and assessment of fracture risk in secondary fracture prevention pathways. And DEXA capacity was reduced drastically or halted altogether during the COVID restrictions. Now many services are experiencing significant backlogs and waiting lists for scans. This has presented our healthcare community with opportunities to modernise and reevaluate the use of DEXA in clinical pathways. And I come to Cassim first. And can I ask you to share how you adapted your pathway during the pandemic to support your patients' access to treatment? Yes, uh, thank you, Jenny. So it did. It was unplanned, so it was very reactive. But we held on to what would benefit patients most, and really uh, we re-evaluated the role of DEXA in terms of it being a risk factor for our decision-making process rather than a necessary step. And then we fell back to using FRACS and fracture site and age to actually uh, try and understand, are there some patients who, while DEXA would be helpful, it's not necessary for the treatment decision-making. So we uh, identified uh, patients who've already had a major osteoporotic fracture, hip, humerus, spine, and femur, and they were pushed forward for treatment if they were aged over 65. And then we used the FRAC score to identify other people who really don't need a DEXA to start treatment or are at such low risk, we can wait to DEXA them later. If I can ask Sarah, how did this affect or support your pathways in FLS? So again, yes, I agree, totally unplanned, a little bit thrown completely um, to our normal. Um, so in Oxford, we've always really quite had quite a risk approach anyway, um, but also with the decks are involved. But this pandemic really brought those restrict, you know, brought that to the forefront. Um, we were restricted to DEXA due to the redeployment of staff within radiology. There was also the stay at home message for the patients. They did not want to come in for DEXA. So it really forced us into taking a sort of more risk stratified approach within the FLS setting. Um, and our key was really to find the most highest risk patients and get them onto treatment quickly. Even if that was just for interim period um, for a short period before DEXA became fully functional again. So we really became quite pragmatic, really, and, and the FRAX uh, was, became our sort of main focus of our triage and our assessment. As, as Kasim has already alluded to, we dropped some of our thresholds to um, the, you know, 65 with a major uh, fracture, and we just didn't focus on the DEXA so much. It was very much about risk, and, and that became our main focus. Jenny, can I ask you to share how DEXA services have been able to adapt to support your primary care referrers and patients? Yes, yes, you can. So um, during the, the beginning of the, the pandemic last year, um, we were aware that we were going to have to pause our, our DEXA service for DEXA scanning. Um, so we had to think of some ideas of, of what we could do to help our patients whilst we couldn't offer them a scan. Um, so one of those things that we knew we could do is a fracture risk assessment, which it can be done without um, the aid of a, of a DEXA scan. So we formulated a, a triage system where we were able to speak to the patient over the phone um, conduct a fracture risk assessment, assessment with them where we asked them questions that were all related to the fracture risk assessment. Um, and then where the triage system came in was um, there is no guidance that is given from the fracture risk assessment. So low risk, 
uh, a moderate risk and high risk. And as to what that patient, um, which category they, they were in, we could then assess whether that patient could be discharged um, from, from our department with some lifestyle advice um, given to the patient. And then we would send that information on to the GP also um, in view that they could re-refer the patient at a later date if they still felt that, that um, if that patient needed a scan. Um, a moderate risk patient, we would add to our planned waiting list for when we opened our debt service again. But again, the patient will be given lifestyle advice as to what they could do to help help their bones whilst they're waiting um, for their for their DEXA scan. Um, and then most importantly, our high risk patients, um, whereas we could send some information to the referrer as to recommendation of treatment whilst the patient is waiting for their DEXA scan, they can get that access to treatment if the referrer felt that was that was appropriate as their fracture risk was high. Um, so that's an overview of what of what we what we did um, whilst we, when we spoke to the patient and obviously what we did following on um, sending the information to to the referrers. All this process has has allowed us to speak to nearly all of our patients that have been on our planned waiting list. The patients have then known exactly when, not exactly when they can be scanned, but you know that they are going to be scanned at a later date and roughly when they can expect that. Um, obviously they have then been given lifestyle advice that they can go away, things like um, diet, exercise, things that they can do to improve their bone health at home that, that don't have to be done um, you know, with, with medication. Um, and it's also allowed our, our service to work more efficiently because now, now we've opened our service up again, we know which patients are more of need of a DEXA scan. So we can scan those patients first that will need that will need DEXA scan more than, than some of them that were at moderate risk and we know that they could maybe wait a little bit longer but our high risk patients um that you know need to have that have that scanned we know that knowing their BMD will affect what happens next in that patient's pathway we know that they they'll need that 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 scan first whereas if we didn't do do that we wouldn't we wouldn't know which patients might need might need a scan first. So that's really, really helped us. Tell me about the proportion of patients that were able to access treatment according to NICE um, through that process of the, the telephone consultations. Okay, so um, we did um, some audit after, um, after a, a period of time um, that we'd started doing the telephone triage system. And it was around 20% of patients that we were referring or um, recommending to that they could be treated. So I think that's that's quite a big proportion of, of patients that we hopefully will have helped um, during during that time. Um, so yeah, you know, without that, that 20%, you know, they, they would have been on our waiting list and that those patients may not have been considered for treatment. So Jenny, so the um, triage system obviously also allowed you to discharge some patients back to their referrer. Um, and how has that affected your waiting list and what proportion were you able to discharge? OK, so it was actually around 20 percent of, of patients that we were able to, to discharge back to their referrers. And obviously that's this has had a, a, a positive impact on our waiting list. Clearly, there have been lessons to learn in view of how we may further optimise the use of DEXA in our pathways. And can I ask, what are you going to take with you into a new normal pathway in the future, Cassim? Well, that's a really good question, because actually we're not going to go back. We're just continuing with this um, risk-based approach. And a, and a question or a, a point of view that probably hasn't been discussed is patient expectations. And we've actually shifted that 
Uh, so in the past, you'd have said you're 65, uh, you've broken your upper arm, we need a DEXA to see if you need treatment. We now say you're 65, you've broken your upper arm, you need treatment. And I think that has been a very valuable lesson to build confidence in healthcare professionals from everywhere, from clinicians, nurses, uh, all everyone in the whole team to say, actually, we now recognize that having had a major fracture is enough in itself. And for sure, there are exceptional patients who do require bone density. It is an extremely valuable tool. But weighing up the pros and cons in terms of the stay at home, people that want to come to hospital. We don't want people to come to hospital. Uh, and the extra time it takes to process. Uh, if we stood back and said, well, actually, for these patients, we're just going to keep it as it is uh, and take a much more risk-based approach uh, and sort of not de-emphasize DEXA, but just prioritize it where there is real diagnostic uncertainty. The mechanism is a bit suspicious, whether it was fragility or not. The site of fracture isn't a major fracture site or their age, where there's a true, we're equipoise, we're really not sure to treat, and DEXA will definitely help us. Thank you. Um, Sarah, I'm really interested, as Cassim points out, in the patient perspective and expectation. Have you found that a challenge with your patients, that they expect to have tests and scans and things? Surprisingly, not always, no. And I think what's been a challenge is almost um, as the clinicians, as nurses, having to change our way of of how we sell it to patients and how we, um, you know, exactly as Kasim said, as we, it's about changing their expectations, but actually the patients don't want to come into hospital. Um, and it, if we change the way we're talking to them and the way we explain their risk, um, rather than a number uh, as a T-score, actually they understand that more. It's more relevant to, to them as a patient. Um, so yeah, it's been a big learning curve, but actually I think there's a, not a lot we'll go back to that we were doing before. There's been a big change and it's, a lot of it has been for the benefit. I think DEXA will be reserved to the patients that where it will actually make a difference to their treatment pathway. So for example, the lower risk patients who we're not quite sure about and you know, sometimes they surprise us with their DEXA scores and sometimes they actually know we were right. All you need is some modifications and off you go and perhaps we'll scan you again in two years time again. And also for those patients that may be eligible for the teriparatides. Um, so yeah, it has changed, but for the good, I think we're seeing benefits from it. And Jenny, what adaptations to your referral criteria and justification or processes might you consider a valuable addition to your service? Okay, um, so one of the really useful aspects that we've um, we've developed um, from performing the fracture risk assessments and the triage system is for our over 75 patients. Um, now we, we get a number of referrals for our over 75 um, patients and previously our process has been um, that we send uh, a letter back to the referrer um, to make them aware of the, the nice guidelines that patients can be assumed to have osteoporosis over the age of 75 and that they can be treated without the need for a DEXA scan. Um, obviously, there are some patients that, that we know if their medication, they have a lot of medication, they don't want to take um, more with that. We, we had a process as to whether we would scan those patients or not. And um, so this has now enabled us to, instead of sending a, a letter back to the referrer, we've been able to do that process ourselves by um, performing a fracture risk assessment with those patients um, to see whether uh, a DEXA scan would be beneficial for them um, by looking at what risk category they, they come out from the fracture risk assessment um, as to whether it's necessary. So we are getting all the information we need from the patient. And then if we still believe that that patient does not will not benefit from that DEXA scan, we can send a letter back to the referrer with all the information that we have spoken with to the patient um, and then 
it just it it gives the referrer a full picture uh, of that patient, what the fracture risk assessment is, and whether treatment is appropriate that, for that patient with or without the need of, of a DEXA scan. So it's definitely something that we're going to be taking forward with us to be able to, to process um, those, those patients. Thank you all for your time and generosity in sharing your experiences and learning. If you have any feedback on this or wish to find out more about the charity, you can visit our website, theros.org.uk, email info at theros.org.uk, or call the General Inquiries line on 01761 471 771. Thank you for watching.